Welcome everyone to the March 31st OMR architecture meeting. Um, today we have uh, one topic from uh, Babneet Singh. He'll be uh, introducing the uh, OMR C Group API. So Babneet, whenever you're ready, please take it away. Yep. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, so today I will be providing an update on the current state of uh, C Group API in OMR. Uh, what it does and the existing problems we are facing with this API and what steps we will be taking in resolving those problems. Uh, so the main objective of this presentation is to start a discussion uh, so that we can prevent breakage of this API in the future. And uh, before diving into that discussion, I will give a brief overview of what C group is or what control group in, on Linux is and uh, what the OMRC group API does. So control group or C group for short provides a mechanism on Linux operating system to control and manage system resources. Uh, its implementation is hierarchical. That means it, it has a tree representation and it has enti entities which can be either called as a resource controller and synonyms, other synonyms are controllers or subsystems. And for, for example, the CPU controller uh, regulates distribution of CPU cycles, bandwidth, and scheduling policy on the operating system. Uh, the CPU set controller provides a mecha mechanism to place CPU and memory nodes, which becomes valuable on NUMA systems. And the memory controller regulates distribution of memory and its usage. There are 12 controllers in total. And now uh, there are also two variants of Seeger V1 and V2. Uh, currently a user can choose which variant of Seeger it wants to use. And, but there are ongoing efforts to adopt Seeger V2 across Linux systems, which will probably take some time So uh, what's, what are the differences between Seeger V1 and V2? Uh, so V2 was developed in order to counter the problems which were encountered with the Seeger V1. And for example, in Seeger V1, uh, the users are given a lot of flexibility to do things, which leads to a lot of complexity and confusion. And at the end, it becomes very difficult to manage and account for system resources. So in C group V2, uh, things are more simplified and unified, and this helps in encountering most of the problems seen with C group V1. Uh, some of the simplifications are uh, C group V2 only allows a single hierarchy, which is not the case in C group V1. In C group V1, each subsystem or each controller could have its own hierarchy, thus a complete, uh, thus making the implementation more complex. And another simplification is that processes can belong to a, only belong to a single subgroup in V2, which is another step towards simplification because in C group V1, processes can choose to be part of multiple subgroups. So overall, uh, C group V2 aims to simplify and unify things in order to improve management of system resources. So this is a brief overview of what C group or control group on Linux is. Uh, now moving to the OMR C group API. It's, uh, it only reads details about processes, resource information from the C group interface. For example, it gathers information about memory stats, limits, how much memory is being used and so on. It also needs information about CU, uh, CPU bandwidth to determine the uh, number of CPUs available. And for on NUMA systems, uh, I think it uses the CPU and memory node placement information, which can also be derived from C group, from the C group interface. Its usage and runtimes uh, is for memory allocation, thread management, and these stats can also be used to uh, diagnose failures related to system failures, uh, system resources, because uh, these things are, uh, the OMR API provides 
functions to print C group information in OpenJNI through Java curves, which is a uh, which is a core dump and contains all the information about the runtime. So currently we are adding support for Seagrip V2 in OMR and OMR issue 1281 is being used to for the high level design discussion and as a global tracker for subtasks. Uh, the main issue over here is that uh, the missing Seagrip V2 support was not caught by the OMR testing through the PR build and diagnosing malfunctions of this API is challenging because the failures are not locking. The process keeps running and it can lead to performance issues. And these perform performance issues can go unnoticed if the purpose is not being continuously monitored over different iterations of the runtime. So we have seen breakages in downstream projects, specifically OpenGNI. Uh, runtime starts with incorrect memory. Runtime does not load the embedded AOT code. And the malfunctions can also lead to have a potential to cause more perf issues. And in some cases, it has also prevented customers to adopt OpenGNI. So this makes it critical that we avoid breakage of this API in the future. And the first step in preventing breakage of this API is to enhance functional testing, which will be pursued as part of OMR issue 1281. But uh, this won't be sufficient on its own. We will also require uh, infrastructure changes since this API works differently on Seager v1 and Seager v2. In addition, its behavior changes whether we are running in a container or not. So we need a uh, Four configurations, a Linux with Seeger v1, Linux with Seeger v2, and the same in a container, container, containerized environment. So uh, we can support these configurations without adding new PR builds. Uh, if we optimize existing Linux PR builds, there are, I think, seven PR builds on different Linux uh, platforms. And if we run them, with each of the above configurations, we should be able to uh, support the required infrastructure to t fully test the Seager API without any uh, new or more resources. Bebney, can I ask a more fundamental question yep. about that? Uh, so how was the API breaking? Like what? What happened to it that caused it to to break? I mean, yes, we weren't testing for it, but why did it become stale? Uh, because I think in some cases, uh, some of the containers or some the new Linux operating systems are using Seeger v2 by default. And on those systems, th this API just gives incorrect information. And the testing the te current testing we have does not uh, validate if it's not sufficient to validate if this API works correctly. Okay, so we only supported V1, yep. and that was causing some problems in systems that were expecting V2, and we were giving incorrect. Uh, so the one of the solutions is to implement V2 support yep. in OMR, and in okay. containerized environments also. Uh, some of the functions this API relies upon was were malfunctioning. So we couldn't identify if we were running in a containerized environment. So since there were no tests and we were not running the PR bills in a containerized environment, so a lot of those uh, malfunctions were also going unnoticed. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for discussion, I have a list of questions over here. Uh, we can go in order and see uh, what others have, uh, what viewpoints others have. So the first one is like, will there be side effects of modifying PR rules in the manner I have suggested? So what kind of testing do we currently have for the C group API, even for V1? Are there actual port library tests that 
exercise that? I only saw one test and it only exercised one function, which was to test the mem limit. And a lot of other, a lot of things. That's... No, that's not sufficient. It's like lacking a lot of other, like there are all, a lot of other functions which have no tests. So, right. So is your proposal to round out the testing for V1 and V2 by providing tests for each of the API methods there? Yep, that's what uh, enhancing functional testing would cover. Um, okay, and then in order to modify the PR builds, that presumably means that those tests need to be running uh, in a container. Or in a Linux operating system, bare metal, bare metal operating system with Seeger V1, and then you would need another one with uh, Seeger V2 enabled. And then you would also need to uh, run Seeger V1 and V2 in a container. So four configurations in total, but I've seen uh, there are different container technologies and uh, to test if you're, so, uh, so a vanilla uh, Linux um, installation, like we would see from any of the nodes that we have in the test farm for OMR, do you have to do anything to enable even C group V1 or is it available by default? Uh, both are available uh, depending upon what OS you're running. Uh, either C1 may, uh, either V1 may be enabled or if it's a newer operating system, uh, V2 may be enabled. So we don't know exactly. So you, you would need tags. You need to tag the machines by inspecting but, them. But one or the other would be available. Only one, yeah. You would, I think both are not available simultaneously. So you can only enable one or the other. And then you'd want to be testing both APIs as well, right? Uh, API stays the same. It needs to function correctly in both the environments. So you need to have some nodes with V1 and some nodes with V2 then. And some nodes with container. Mm -hmm which will run Linux with Seeger V1 and Seeger, another container, containerized environment, which will run Linux with Seeger V2. Okay. Okay, now I understand the bottom part of your slide here. That's, you've already found out which nodes have which. No, I, I this is a, just a suggestion, like we can, like, I'm assuming all of them currently only run Seeger V1. So we can modify these PR builds so that, you know, for instance, Linux x86 will only do Linux with Seeger V1 in container. x86-64 will do uh, V2 in container. And then Linux and ARM will only cover Linux Seeger V1 and so forth. I haven't uh, looked into uh, what machines, what uh, coverage or what secret version each machine has yet. So that is still a to do. And then presumably you'd want this on Power Linux and Z Linux as well? No, I think uh, Linux operating system should function the same on all those architectures. We just need uh, at least what it doesn't matter what architecture it runs on. We just need uh, a variation of this configuration running. It doesn't matter what architecture is chosen for the configuration. Okay. Um, okay, well, I mean, if you're just piggybacking on top of an existing either a Linux installation. I don't know if we actually run, uh, do we do, con I don't think we do container testing on OMR yet, but um, certainly running it on top of um, whatever the bare metal or it's a virtual VM um, seems to be doable. But then uh, Docker is no longer free as 
a container technology, we will we have to worry about all those things at some point. So I was hoping to use Docker for the container technology. Uh, do they have? I, I don't I don't recall all the restrictions on the, or the on the on the new license. What about? Do they give any sort of uh, uh, exception to open source projects? Because that's uh, what this is, right? Yes. There should be something like that, but I will have to double check. But because there are other container technologies as well, and uh, we will, I'm not sure if we need, we will probably need to make sure uh, our functions would check whether we are running in a container works in those container technologies correctly, because the implementation may change different, may change slightly depending upon the container technology. Okay, so you'd want, I mean, ideally you'd like a Docker and you maybe want Podman or something. Yep. So we have some uh, container variation in container technology, so we don't, so we will know like, like some, so I'm guessing Podman and Docker are the widely, most widely used containers. So we can probably go with those two, so Okay. What other questions did you have? Uh, they're over here. I just. So, like, I'm not sure, like, if we lose functional coverage for other things like GC and JIT, if we modify PR builds like this, like if we are running in a containerized environment, we'll, you know, there will be issues with GC or JIT testing. I mean, we're not doing anything. I mean, I'm thinking specifically about the compiler and the compiler in OMR, like this is not OpenJ9 testing. This is, this is OMR testing. Um, I don't think the behavior will be any different. Off the top of my head. Okay. And the other question was like, is this sufficient to prevent breakages in future enhancing functional tests or, and uh, adding more infrastructure support, or do we need to also? Well, the fact that we're, you're actually going to write tests for each of the APIs. I mean, that's that's way ahead of where we are right now. It sounds, and the fact that we even do V2 testing, where that's way ahead of where we are right now. So, um, it's definitely a lot more sufficient. Um, you mentioned something earlier about performance problems. It, what's the, what's the origin of what what would cause that? What what causes the performance issues? Uh, for instance, if you uh, allocate less memory than what can be allocated, then you are spending a lot of time in GC, for instance, and which will affect the throughput of an application. Similarly, if you're not using AOT code, then again your throughput will be impacted, and all those things I think uh, depend upon this API functioning correctly. So is this is this sort of surprise behavior in that I'm asking for a certain chunk of memory for my heap. I don't, and, and somehow mysteriously, I don't get it. Uh, or, I think is it, it or is it tells me you don't have enough memory. You have to reduce the amount of heap and you have to restart it with a, a lower heap setting. I think we have, we have only seen startup behavior differences in startup behavior. The JVM starts with a lot less memory. For instance, I think it, only use 512 megabytes where it could have used three gigs of memory. Mm. But I think we have not identified uh, any of those surprise issues here midway during runtime. Memory usage fluctuates or memory behavior is different. Okay. How long do the tests that you write, how long do they take to run? Are they just super simple unit tests or are there other? They should be super uh, simple. 
Okay, so this isn't going to be a huge burden on the CI pipeline then? No. This should be a fairly simple few seconds. Okay, so what's the um, what's the plan of attack here? Um, you need to configure the some of the nodes on the um, on, yep. on the CI farm with the um, yeah with uh, you have to re-image them either with with with, with V two or, or sorry re-enable V or, ah, enable V two support on some of them. Some of them you have to look into getting um, some container technology installed on there. Yes, and then I think the PR build scripts will need to be modified, uh, which will you know choose the right machine with the right configuration. And for instance, if it's running in containerized, I think some more commands will be added to the PR build scripts. So that will need to be updated. But I, I don't have access to uh, formatting the machine, so who would be the point of contact? Is it going to be Adam? Joe? Uh, Joe and, uh, Adam and Joe have typically done that in the past, yes, for us. Yeah, so I can uh, create an outline for them and see if... Yeah, I guess it would have been good to have Adam here today to at least uh, address some of the... Uh, address some of those questions, but... Um, if you have an issue that you create an OMR for what you need, we can certainly tag the appropriate people there. So that then... yep, I will I will open an issue later. So okay, we can have a discussion about it. Okay, so that's the 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 infrastructure side that you need, and then there's another. The other thing is to actually write the tests. Well, there's writing the tests, and there's also I guess doing the implementation for V two. Yes, and it's, it's going to be part of OMR issue 1281. Okay. And I think Eric is working on it, and I'm also working on it, and Keith is also helping with reviews. Okay. I'm just trying to think how that... Um, the effect on the nodes where you want to run container technology that um, th that that container technology is only you're just making it available on those nodes that doesn't mean that a test actually has to use container technology is that right so for example cool. just the tests that need to deploy in a container would use that, whereas we could still dispatch jobs to it that don't want to run in a container. Correct, but okay. at this point, I think we run everything under a single command. So if you do a Jenkins build all, I think it's going to run CMake all tests under a single command. So we don't have the granularity to run certain tests in a different setting and certain tests uh, in the container, so I think it um, can be. Oh, I didn't mean at that granularity. I meant, um, what did I mean? I mean? But you can use the machine to either run the test fully on the bare metal side, or you can choose to run. Yeah, that's what I meant, yes. In, in a container environment, yep. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, I don't know what. So you are confident that you don't need to be testing this on Power or Z. Uh, or we can AR sixty four even. Well, I guess you had that. You had ARM on your um, on your list, but uh... I think once we do Seeker B, like just one configuration on any architecture should be sufficient to. Uh, Test those APIs. I think those APIs do not function differently based upon architecture. They are only Linux specific, so we just need a Linux operating system to test those APIs. Unless the Linux implementation varies differently or 
on those architectures, but I don't think so. That's the case. Okay. Um, not aware of this off the top of my head. Does this apply to Mac OS at all? C group B1, I don't think. It's only Linux specific. It's, so it's, it's purely Linux? Okay. Right. Okay. Um, any questions for Babneet? Concerns? So you're going to be driving all of this then? Uh, the yep. infrastructure side, the test development, the API I will begin. development. Yeah. Yep, I will cover everything. So this support itself has been uh, merged into OMR. It's the testing that has been uh, discussed here. Is that right? Or has the core V2 support not been merged yet? It is actually ongoing at this point. We are we have PRs open, which are being reviewed. Okay. But, but, think... but, but those PRs are not going to be held up by this these broader questions is, is that right we are locally testing so we so before merging we are making sure it works locally in our environment yeah so but in the future because i think uh it will help us uh el resolve those customer issues quickly if we can add v2 support as soon as possible but in the future we will have tests which will automatically verify the functionality of this api yeah, for sure. I mean, as you said at the beginning, this is ensuring that it stays uh, both V1 and V2 support stay um, so don't break, right? So, yep. so that, that's certainly fine from a medium to long term perspective. But in the short term, you're testing on your own machines and uh, merging the PR, the cont continuing to build, push the support into the into the project, right? Yes, that's correct. I think the PR builds will only, only test compilation failures, but uh, behavioral uh, testing is done locally. And I think we are getting a confirmation like things are being fixed in up in upstream, or sorry, in downstream projects such as OpenGL9 as those PRs get merged. Okay, thanks. So when you're testing one of these API, like for example, you, you mentioned earlier an example about um, the available memory was not coming back correctly. How are you valid? How are you ver How are you testing the API? Are you just making sure that it returns without any kind of exception, or is there any attempt to currently that's make what it sense is. make sense of the number that comes back? It's just to see if it works, like doesn't crash or anything, or no error codes or anything like that. I think currently. It only does, uh, current, the current test only checks if it's returning a valid value. It doesn't verify if that valid value is correct. So you would need system information or the host information on uh, what memory the host has, and then you would need to compare it with what the API is returning. Mm -hmm. That is missing, so you would need a further le level of verification where you already know what the machine what uh, stats the machine has and then you will need you will compare with what the api is returning right now i think uh, the mem limit test only checks for a valid value or if there are any errors in running the api so it can still return a valid value and it may still it may be incorrect mm -hmm. Okay. Um, sounds like this is uh, um, important uh, important work for the container environments for sure. And I'm glad to see that there's more testing coming. That's good. Any uh, other questions for Babney? Okay, well, if not, um, 
thank you, Babneet. That was yep. a good introduction to that. So we look forward to seeing some work happening there. Uh, okay, that was our last, uh, uh, or our only topic for the uh, for this week's meeting. Um, so I've got the uh, agendas created for the next two meetings. Um, we've already got a topic for the next uh, one in two weeks, but uh, you know if it's a small topic, we can still squeeze one in there. Um, so by all means, um, find those and propose uh, topics on those issues if you if you want to bring something up. Um, if not, uh, I guess that's all for today. We'll adjourn and uh, we'll see everybody in two weeks. Thanks. Thanks, Babneet. Yep. Take care. Bye.